For those who believe in marijuana and cannabis freedom, the future has never been brighter. Right now, there's an awakening to the benefits of cannabis for medicinal purposes, specifically something called CBD oil. But is the new CBD craze being manipulated by media and politicians? If it weren't, we wouldn't need to do a show about it. The first step toward truth is to be informed. CBD oil. You've probably heard of it by now, thanks to CNN's Dr. Sanjay Gupta. People are lighting up all over the country. Millions are now aware of the cannabinoid-rich oil being used to help children in Colorado with epilepsy. Especially this one little girl, Charlotte Figgy, after whom the Charlotte's Web strain of cannabis has been named. is their daughter Charlotte having a seizure. I wanted to learn what CBD oil and the push behind it is all about, so I traveled to Denver, Colorado, home to legalized marijuana and the Stanley Brothers, the family behind the Charlotte's Web strain of cannabis oil. They were the ones to prove in Charlotte Figgy's case that CBD rich cannabis oil can prevent seizures in children. We had this strain that we were actually going to use for uh, cancer patients because studies have shown that CBD helps stop, stops the metastasizing of cancer. So we went ahead and tried it because we knew it was very low in THC and after she had it a week later she, was, um, she went a week seizure free. Yeah, gee. The child who had had 300 seizures a week was now down to just one every seven days. <laughs> Charlotte Figgy's life was transformed by CBD oil. Now to understand what is unique about CBD oil, you have to understand what a cannabinoid is. Now in marijuana, there are multiple cannabinoids, including THC, CBD, CBN, CBA, and over 160 other compounds in the plant, including terpenes from the plant that create the most effective medicine. Now, to be clear, in order to get a high from cannabis, you need to have a high level of just one cannabinoid, THC. Again, that's just one particular cannabinoid. Now in the Stanley's case, they began growing cannabis with lower levels of that cannabinoid THC and higher levels of CBD. The CBD is known to be a neuroprotectant. It's also a, uh, one of the few things that causes neurogenesis. So it's not just seizures that this helps in epileptics, it's autoimmune disorders, whether that's cancer, Crohn's, lupus, there's so many different types of things. It's a huge anti-inflammatory, so all kinds of people would love to have this. Today, in the stunningly short time since Charlotte Figgy's story became famous, the Stanleys have thousands of patients on a waiting list for their CBD oil. As you can see, it drips down. We're able to recapture the alcohol so we can reuse it. When it's done, we're left with a, an oil that is more like a molasses. In fact, there are thousands of families who have already uprooted their lives and moved to Colorado for the CBD oil. Thousands more are on the way. They're called cannabis refugees. I test it again, and then I can give it to the patients. Well, all of that has led to other states wanting to legalize CBD oil. In fact, the governor of Utah, of all places, just signed a CBD bill into law legalizing possession of the oil. In addition, a bill in Alabama has now passed the legislature. It is awaiting the governor's signature to be signed into law in that state. In fact, lawmakers in Kentucky, Florida, South Carolina, Wisconsin, and many other states either have or will now consider CBD bills just this year. Well, we're you know at 20 states right now, so you already have 20 laws on the books that the people wanted or the people's representatives wanted. Well, Mark's Law has a company in Denver called iComply, which is fighting to keep small growers compliant with state regulation on marijuana. There are eight strict guidelines that must be followed. Mark says states are jumping on board with CBD, but not with marijuana. So I think what politicians certainly don't realize when they're trying to play to where the puck was and not where the puck is going to be is that regulating just one compound 
greatly underserves most of the patients who really need this medicine. So even along the lines of medical efficacy, it simply isn't reasonable. Now, the reality that Mark addresses is how media and politicians are jumping on the CBD train because it doesn't get you high. But they're ignoring some very important medical facts about cannabinoids. I talked via Skype with Shauna Banda about this very issue. Start out by telling me about um, when you were sick, the, the, the level to which you were sick, and, and what that looked like in your life. Oh, I was, um, you know, of course, I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease in 2002. And in that first year, um, I had my first bowel resection. Body was recognizing that something was wrong, and my immune system went into overdrive and essentially attacked itself. You know, your life starts to go downhill. You're in pain constantly, so you can't, you can't even think straight. Uh, it's hard to go through your daily to day life when you're constantly thinking about the pain and how to get rid of it. Shona's condition was so bad that her teeth literally became soft, and the roof of her mouth had turned black. She couldn't stand and says she parented her children from the couch. Described like having a stomach flu every day for years, despite all the medications and the doctors, Shauna was rotting from the inside out. Shauna's breakthrough came when she saw a YouTube documentary, Run From The Cure by Rick Simpson, which explained how to extract CBD and THC oil from marijuana. In 2001, my family doctor informed me that there was nothing more they could do. They had nothing left to try on me, so I was on my own. Shauna had started smoking marijuana just to be able to function, but she wasn't getting better. Shauna's husband at the time, he wanted to get her a vaporizer, but that vaporizer became the road to so much more. He went and got me a very old fashioned glass dome vaporizer from the 70s, and I was reading a book and I pinched off that hose way too long and oil started forming on the dome and uh, he went out and got me a spatula and I started to scrape it out three times a day and I put whatever I could get into a gel cap and um, and within three days I didn't need the use of my cane anymore to walk and I started healing quite rapidly so rapidly that I started to write a journal that journal would become a book live free or die Shauna's mantra for her own life and the lives of the people she continues to educate across the country on the benefits of cannabis oil today but politicians and media are making CBD oil out to be the kind of good kind of cannabis, while arguing that THC is the bad kind of cannabis. Now listen, while that's not how any of this works, that is the case that is subtly being made. As that happens, two forces will likely come into play. Keep an eye on. Number one, in order to push the market away from the small sellers and the harvesters of CBD oil, states, along with the feds, will likely create a regulatory climate that is so difficult to manage that they will, through cronyism, force CBD oil into the hands of a few, which in turn limits supply and then forces the price of the oil to rise considerably. Number two, big pharmaceutical companies will likely begin putting out a safe and legitimate form of CBD oil. And that is already starting to happen. GW Pharmaceuticals out of uh, Great Britain has been producing Sativex, which is a 50-50 blend of CBD and THC. They have no real research behind whether or not 50-50 is even the right ratio, and they certainly don't include the other terpenes or other comp chemical compounds from the cannabis plant. So we could see the bone get tossed to the pharmaceutical dog. It's certainly a possibility, but I think if more people take a stand for really descheduling marijuana, regulating it in a manner similar to alcohol to allow adults who are already out there supply and demand uh, economics wanting this plant and providing a safe way to be able to provide it is really the best model to move forward with. So what you need to know is where the U.S. government actually stands on this issue. Cannabis, marijuana, today it is still a Schedule One drug. That means, according to our government, it has no medicinal use whatsoever and has a high potential for abuse. Now, does our government really believe that? No. In 1999, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, HHS, filed for this patent for the use of cannabinoids for medicinal purposes. Also in 1999, they filed for a second patent, specifically for cannabis oil for the treatment of disease. 
That's right. Our government, through the taxpayer-funded Department of Health and Human Services, holds two patents on cannabinoids and cannabis oil to treat certain diseases like Alzheimer's and autoimmune diseases like Crohn's disease. Meanwhile, our government, through taxpayer-funded agencies like the Department of Justice, pursue, arrest, and imprison Americans who would attempt to access or use cannabis oil to heal their own bodies. Because in public, they claim cannabis oil is not medicine. And in private, they seek to own the rights to that medicine. Truth means that humanity is greater than politics. All right, so now you've been informed, so what's next? Well, now it's time to get engaged, and you can do that three ways. Number one, you can click subscribe on our YouTube channel. It allows us to send you new content anytime it's created. It's good for that reason, but also it demonstrates to YouTube the value of this kind of content. Number two, click on the link below that will take you to binswan.com because there at the end of this story, we have put together an action plan, tangible steps that you can take to actually change the culture on this particular subject. How do you impact or change the culture of the people around you? Well, you do that through confrontation. Gentle, respectful, but confrontation of these issues. The only way we're ever gonna change things is if we begin to confront the archetypes that people are building up in their minds. Finally, if you are not contributing to our project yet, I'd ask that you consider doing so. If you go to benswan.com slash contribute, there you're gonna find how you can help us to create more videos just like this one. This particular CBD video was created through crowdfunding, which means that thousands of people across the country believed in what we were trying to do and contributed hard-earned dollars to help make this happen. It doesn't just happen. And as you know by now, media is just not gonna simply talk about this subject in an honest way. If we want truth in media, we have to make it happen. And I'm asking you to partner with us to do so. Go to benswan.com slash contribute. Find out how you can stand with us through dollars or Bitcoin. Contribute today.